Hi there folks, welcome back to Rich Reviews. And the latest review that I want for you for you guys here is a documentary. This is the second documentary of the year here, folks. And it comes from HBO, and this is Kill Chain, the Cyber War on American Elections. And what do you know? It's the election season that is upon us. And unless we can easily get out of our houses to vote because of the coronavirus. And the same people 15 years ago from any nominated Hacking America is back here with Harry Housie, the security expert from Finland. I never saw that original film, so don't blame me here. I'm going in relatively blind. And if you ever want to see a big short approach to how basically how antiquated our voting system is, then this would be that film because you're going to learn the same truth about how basically our voting system is outdated, how easily hackable it is, how basically security firms are like they talk a big game and they are in denial as to when problems in which occur basically here. And early on in the film, Sue Halperin, who is an author and journalist, basically says our elections are local. And it's up to those local officials to determine which type of method we use for balloting. We could use paper ballots, we could use electronic monitoring, we could do touch screens and so on and so forth, and they report to a central hub. Obviously, they have a memory disk. Now, that memory disk could easily be hackable and obviously changed. Now, 15 years ago, when Harry Hersey did this, he was able to change the results of one machine. Obviously, this is a kill the messenger mode because basically the firm that made the machine brought in their own expert and determined that, oh, yes, this thing wasn't hackable, which would be surprised to learn that there are only three vendors that supply machines to our local elections. Of course, they talk the big game, but as one person pointed out, once they show up and inspect their code and come to realize, oh yes, there are problems with their code, they're basically told to get out. We have our own inspectors to do this. Trust me here, folks, I never knew any of this, and maybe that's the greatest thing about a documentary like this. Yes, there's a whole lot of cyberpunk jargon. Harry Hersey then buys three outdated machines from a warehouse in Ohio. And obviously we're told constantly, oh yes, these are not connected to the internet. These voting machines are then not connected to the internet. But what do you know, when he first turns one on, maybe it's in the room that they're in, I don't know. It, it basically says, oh yes, you're connected to a local internet server. Hey, trust me here, folks, sometimes, whoops, there you go. And also, one of the more fascinating, entertaining moments of this film, for the, this is worth watching the price of this documentary alone, is when Harry Hersey goes to DEF CON. What is DEF CON? It's a three-day hackers convention. And what do you know? All the voting machines are easily hackable, they declare. And how basically one guy is like, he's on his obviously high-tech laptop, and obviously a couple of feet away is a voting machine that uses Windows XP. Wow, what an old machine that is. And obviously, yeah, he's able to turn the voting machine off. Obviously, there's a whole bunch of material here that I really wish I could go into, but obviously I don't have enough time to want to go into it. Obviously, we do go into the Georgia gubernatorial election from last year and how basically Ryan Kemp was basically the Secretary of State of Georgia. He was obviously overseeing the election of which he was going to win it, obviously. And obviously, a statistician comes in, and maybe this was actually true, I don't know. The Georgia election had clear issues. Come to the conclusion that, oh yeah, this one particular machine had too high a rate in a Democratic area for voting Republican. So they learn something about Russia years. According to Mark Warner, the senator from Virginia here, chief of the general staff of Russia, basically is like, yes, we cannot defeat you militarily. But we can sow dissent and discord among you countries here. Obviously, Putin wanted Marie Le Pen to become president of France instead of Macron because Marie Le Pen was a far-right person. And how, at least at one point, in the Ukrainian election, right after they expelled pro-admiring Russian leader, they at first reported, oh yes, this, that this far-right person had won over Peter Petrenko, but that obviously that proved not to be the case. We devote some time to reality winner. He obviously relicked memos saying that Russian did indeed was hacking the results of the election. She obviously got a minimum of five years in jail for this. He kind of wishes that, oh yes, Alex Gibney would do this type of documentary because 
he did a film about the stuck knife virus and the, and let me confess the stuck knife virus isn't all that sexy but hey look election hacking certainly is sexy we do, we, then we devote some time also to an indian hacker who has a twitter handle i don't want to repeat here because i don't want to give him any business but he claimed i hacked into the alaskan results obviously i could have changed the results but i didn't one thing we obviously learn here is that oh yeah one big hack today might be seen as less impressive say six months to a year from now to two years from now because people want to up the ante when it comes to hacks when it comes to outdoing everyone else and we also obviously meet Amy Klobuchar who ran for president of James Lankford who was a Republican senator from Oklahoma who obviously want cybersecurity bills passed in the Senate but obviously Mitch McConnell is blocking them because Mitch McConnell is like, yes, our elections are safe and secure as conceivably possible. We don't. Well, maybe Mitch should see this film here. Obviously, he probably won't. And so, what obviously is kill chain in regards to this film is you have one goal right here, but you have six steps away from actually getting to this result, and you try knocking each thing down, sort of like dominoes. So, I, so anyway, folks, what I'm going to say about kill chain, I am going to give this. Amazingly enough, I'm going to give this. I'll leave for early because I feel like everyone should be watching this, even though there are moments that are incredibly dry. But I feel like if you want to watch something that's interesting, do that. So, folks, Kill Team, have you seen this? What did you think? Please put everything in the comment box below your folks. As always, folks, like, comment, subscribe, and yourself in knowledge. I'm on Twitter at MichaelRichardRews2. I will see you next time, folks. Yes, hooray.